So this time we got the new M4 chip, same design and bunch of questions that is the M4 MacBook Air actually worth it? Let's break it down. So as you know, few months back, M4 MacBook Air just got updated again with the new M4 chip. So for this video, instead of a review, I want to answer some of the frequently asked questions that I've seen pop up on the internet. So think of this as your no-nonsense buyer's guide. Alright, so the first question is, what's different this time? So this year we got an upgrade from M3 to M4 chip and we also got an upgrade in the base RAM as well, which used to start from 8 gigabytes, which is now 16 gigabytes, which naturally makes you think that it's going to be more expensive than previous models. But no, actually they are going backwards and this time MacBook Air starts at $9.99 and if you go for education pricing then it's only $8.99 and we also got a new sky blue color that replaced the space gray model and in terms of battery life there is a slight improvement from the previous models but I usually don't pay too much attention to those numbers because battery life is going to vary depending on your usage and really the main reason why we got a bump from 18 to 16 gigabytes of RAM is for Apple intelligence and even if you use that or not just say thanks to Apple intelligence because we really needed that 16 gigabytes of RAM so, so instead of paying extra to upgrade that 16 GB RAM now you just get that default in the standard model all right so the question number two is can it handle 4K video and photo editing? Yes, definitely. It works great, especially with the M4 chip, since it has this new encoders and decoders, which makes everything more faster. So things like loading your video files or rendering the final output or final image, all of that would be more faster than the previous chips because of these new encoders and decoders. And just to put all the chips in perspective, base M4 chip has one of each and M4 Max has twice of each. So if you're dealing with like bigger files, such as like 6K videos or 60 megapixel images, then M4 Max would be more suitable for those kind of workflows. All right, question number three, does it overheat since it doesn't have a fan inside? It doesn't overheat at all, but I would say that it does get warm if you start using like Final Cut Pro or stuff like that. And since it doesn't have an internal fan like MacBook Pros, it uses passive cooling using heat sink and aluminum chassis, which kind of helps Apple to keep this computer really light and super slick. So in order to prevent overheating while you do graphic intensive work, it slightly slows down your computer and your software to keep everything cooler. And that's why I say that if you're going to do like a GPU intensive work, then MacBook Pro is the right choice for you. But again, everyone like me who just uses like Photoshop and like Final Cut Pro for 4K editing, then this laptop is perfect for you. All right, question number four, how's the display quality like? So this MacBook has a liquid retina display, which is a LED backlit IPS panel, and it can output up to 500 nits of brightness at maximum, which is I think pretty decent in like straight direct sunlight. And the only thing that you probably not like about this display is that it caps at 60 Hertz. So you don't get that pro motion technology similar to that MacBook Pro where you get that smooth 120 Hertz display and if you're not sure that this is going to bother you or not then if you're just using this computer for mainly content consumption or like just productivity work then 60 Hertz it's perfectly fine but if you're actually planning to game on this laptop or do anything which requires like high refresh rate then it's not going to work out for you in terms of gaming this M4 chip is completely fine for that but I wouldn't say that you should buy this computer just for gaming purposes only. Or right, question number five, should you get 16 gigabytes or upgrade to 24 gigabytes? Which one is right for you? So if your work is more like web browser heavy, then I would say 16 gigabyte is pretty good enough. But if you are doing a lot of multitasking where you need all the apps to be open at the same time, then definitely look for more RAM because Apple doesn't allow you to upgrade RAM later on. Whereas in terms of storage, you can definitely upgrade that using like external SSD and whatnot. Now, if you wanna know how much RAM you really use on day-to-day -day basis, then there's a way to find out. So next time when you start working on your MacBook, open all the apps that you're going to use on your daily basis at the same time. And the next thing you wanna do is open the activity monitor in that. And that's where you can see how much RAM is being used while you have all of your things open at the same time. So if you're cutting too close where your actual RAM is 16 gigabytes and you are using 15 gigabytes of RAM, 
then definitely consider upgrading to at least 24. Because once you start capping the 16 gigabytes of RAM, it uses swap memory, which eventually makes your internal SSD slower, which makes the computer slow down as it goes. Or question number six, should you go for 13 or 15 inch of display? Now this is totally up to you because there's not much difference in terms of like overall specs. Uh, doesn't matter which size you go for. The only thing that you get a little bit better in 15 inch is the speaker. But other than that, it's completely same computers. Question number seven, should I go for a MacBook Pro instead of this MacBook Air M4? There's only two reasons why you should go for a MacBook Pro over this. First one is, if you do more GPU based work, then definitely go for a MacBook Pro because it has more cores to offer. And the second one is if you're going for that ProMotion display where you need like 120 hertz of refresh rate. And if you want more ports on your laptop, such as Thunderbolt ports, SD card slot and HDMI input, then of course MacBook Pro is the right choice for you. But if you don't care about any of that, then MacBook Air is completely fine. For question number eight, should you go for M4 Mac mini or MacBook Air? So if you're like really tight on budget, but you still want like good performing computer, then definitely go for Mac mini because for just $600, you get great value for your money. But just keep in mind that when you buy Mac mini, you also need other peripherals like your keyboard, your mouse and display as well. So if you're looking for something portable and on the go, then nothing beats laptop. Our right, question number nine is a bit controversial. Should you go for a MacBook Air or iPad Pro? Now, if you're an iPad Pro fan, you're going to hate me for what I'm going to say. I actually returned my M4 iPad Pro in order to get this MacBook Air. And there are a few reasons why I did that switch. First one is macOS just felt more useful than iPad OS for my workflow because mainly I was using my iPad Pro for like content consumption and stuff like that. I wasn't like really designing or anything and wasn't really utilizing the touchscreen part of the iPad. So I bought the Magic Keyboard and I was pretty much treating my iPad as my laptop. And there were a few situations where I only had to choose one device to take with me. Then I was pretty much leaning towards MacBook because you know I can just do more with the MacBook than iPad OS even though it has pretty much all the things you need, such as like Final Cut Pro and all of that, but I still don't feel comfortable using all of that on iPad and go full iPad mode. And in my opinion, even though it has M4, it's not really utilizing the full potential of what M4 has to offer. But if you are someone like a designer or artist who really wants that OLED screen and touch functionalities, then you know definitely go for iPad Pro. All right, so the final question is, is it actually worth upgrading? Now, I'll make this really easy for you. If you're coming from like an Intel-based chip or M1 chip, then M4 is a significant difference. You see a huge difference in terms of speed in like renders and just like loading everything. But if you already have a MacBook Air with M2 or M3 chip, then I don't really think that this is a right upgrade for you because you're not going to really feel much difference in terms of like speed or render times. And coming from M2 or M3, there's no significant design changes as well. It's pretty much same coming from M2. So that's pretty much majority of questions that I've seen people asking on the internet about this new MacBook Air M4. And if I still haven't answered the question you had about this MacBook Air M4, then definitely put it in the comments down below and I'll try my best to answer all of that. And if you enjoyed this video, then definitely check out these other videos that I think you will also enjoy and I'll see you in the next one.